What is up guys, Jeffy Gaming here and welcome to my review of the 2015 Australian Grand Prix. Obviously the 2015 game isn't out so there'll be 2014 footage in the background but as soon as the 2015 game's out that will be in the background so uh, here's my first review of the season. They're just going to be like 10 minute quick reviews of the race which just happened today. So um, if you're looking for more reviews, this type of thing then please subscribe for future videos and leave a like if you enjoy this. So. First of all, the anticipation was high for the start of the 2015 F1 season. Obviously, we knew Mercedes would be miles ahead, and it looks like they've got a 0.7 second lead over Ferrari and Williams at the moment. As uh, Mercedes locked out the front row, Hamilton took it from Rosberg. He actually took it by about half a second, so it's a bit of a statement there from Hamilton. And I think that's going to lead him to the championship in the end, sadly. I'm not a Hamilton fan, but I've got to admit that. Um, Ferrari look like the second and it's good to see I am a Ferrari fan and yeah it looks like Raikkonen could uh, give uh, Vettel a run from, for his money but I think the battle between Ferrari and Williams will be awesome this season. Um, Manor obviously didn't make the grid or qualifying, their car isn't ready for the season and I don't know what to think of that, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, as long as they get on the grid at least by China then, I think it will be worth it, but they're going to be miles off the pace. Like McLaren, uh, the worst worst team at the moment apart from Manor, and they're like two, three seconds off the pace, and Button just, oh, he doesn't deserve this. And imagine if Alonso was here, if he was racing, that he just, oh, he just wouldn't be able to cope. He'd be going crazy on the radio, I bet, but... Uh, for the race, um, there were only 15 starters. Uh, Alonso was replaced by Magnussen. The Manners didn't start. Um, Bottas had a back injury which ruled him out the race, which is a shame. I think he could have been in a great battle for third place. Uh, Kvyat in his first race for Red Bull. Um, his gearbox went on the fo like the lap to the grid. Um, Magnussen's engine blew up on the way to the grid. So we were left with 15 starters and the, the grid just looked really bare and it, it just looked weird I must say and yeah having a McLaren at the back just you don't see that type of thing too often so from the start uh, everyone got away well apart from pretty much Grosjean who I think had an earth failure and retired on the first lap into the first corner was the two Mercedes and then it was that's a third and then the two Ferraris made I think made a little bit of contact Vettel was on the inside Viking and got a better start and Vettel kind of hit the first corner curb which knocked him across the track Viking and had to back off and Carlos signs signs I can't, I can't remember how you say his name Carlos signs um, was right behind Viking and had to break really quickly made a bit of contact and then the grid just bunched up, there was NASA, Maldonado, and they went three wide through turn one, and Raikkonen hit NASA, who hit Maldonado, and unluckily went into the wall. Maldonado obviously known for crashing out, but this was, this was not his fault, and he was really unlucky. He actually did a decent job in qualifying, so it's a shame for him. So both Lotuses were out on the first lap, and they really could have got points this weekend. It was the chance to get points because, to be fair, they were pretty awful in 2014. Um, so Maldonado's crash brought out the safety car. And from the start, uh, NASA, he made a great restart and overtook Sainz for 5th place. Yeah, it was 5th place. Ricardo was with him in 6th as uh, he he uh, overtook Sainz as well. And Raikkonen was down to 8th, but his pace didn't merit that position. Uh, yeah, Rosberg was sleeping at the restart and Hamilton just bolted and they barely saw each other in the whole race. Hamilton just had too much pace for Rosberg and the gap kept changing. It was like two seconds one time, a few laps later up to four, but I think Hamilton had Rosberg on under control and was just managing the fuel and yeah, he had it covered. It was an easy victory for him and the Mercedes was just miles ahead of the rest. I mean, what was the gap in the end? 34 seconds to Vettel in third, so that's pretty much half a second a lap. So the difference isn't as bad as in qualifying, but still, that's a big gap. And only five cars finished on the lead lap, which <laughs> I think it shows how dominant Mercedes are. And if they don't have any issues, they should come 
first and second every single race. I mean, last season, the only times they didn't finish first is when they messed it up. I suppose, apart from, yeah, Belgium crashed into each other. Canada, they had problems. And Hungary, yeah, that was in the rain. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be Mercedes 1-2 every single race. But apart from a couple, obviously, because there will be issues. Vettel was pretty awesome in third. I thought he did a good job. Um, he ov overcut Massa in the pit stop as Massa came out just behind Ricardo and I think he was stuck behind him for a full lap. So that ruined his race then. Vettel on debut, getting a third for Ferrari. It was a great performance and I think he's it's going to... He's going to do a good job this season. I think it's going to be between him and Bottas fighting for third in the championship. And the Ferrari-Williams battle is going to be fantastic. Um, Massa finished fourth. Got some decent points on the board. Obviously, got overtook by Vettel. But he had a solid race. Some good points on the board. And the last driver not to get lap. And I was really surprised by his performance this weekend. Was Felipe Nasser in the Sauber. Sauber scored no points last season. And already in the first race... They are third in the Constructors with 14 points as Ericsson finished 8th as well. But Nasa put in a great performance. He had a great start but obviously tapped Maldonado taking him out. But it wasn't Nasa's fault at all. Overtook signs uh, after the safety car restart. And then he defended from Ricardo and Raikkonen really well. He was definitely put under pressure but just shows he's uh, got a mature head on him. And he did a really good job and he didn't get lapped. Unlike like Ricardo in sixth, Red Bull, uh, Renault, the Renault power unit is not great. Red Bull just had no pace this weekend, and considering Ricardo was finishing second last season with all the problems they had, sixth is just not good enough. And I think it's the end of the Red Bull. Well, obviously it's the end of the Red Bull dominance, but I think they could be dropping down the field in the next few years, and they could be battling just to stick in the top ten. So I think Ricardo got the best out of the Red Bull, and with I think it. Is Adrian Newey still leaving? I'm sure he's leaving this season. Um, I'd have to get that confirmed, but it's not looking good for Red Bull. Uh, seventh was Hulkenberg, considering Force India have done very little testing. That's a great job. Um, he had a pretty uneventful race. Didn't really seem too much. But yeah, solid six points. He's a consistent driver. And once again, I'll say it, Hulkenberg should be in a bigger team. Eighth was Ericsson. Um, he did pit on the first lap and then went... Two option stints. I thought that strategy could have worked well, but I think he got stuck behind cars in the first stint because he probably could have been up there with the likes of Ricardo because uh, he was battling with. I don't think he was battling, he was behind Verstappen in the early stages. Sainz finished ninth on his debut. He could have finished seventh and probably should have, but uh, he had a problem in his pit stop. Um, yeah, he was just held for about 30 seconds and lost so much time. But a good comeback to finish ninth. Um, but uh, in the middle, yeah, the Toro Rossos, Verstappen was on the prime tyres while uh, Sainz was on the options. And the gap was only six seconds, like, after the first stint. So I think Verstappen would have beaten Sainz. Obviously, if the problems didn't occur, then we would have seen it playing out. And I think Verstappen could have finished seventh or eighth, maybe, battling Hulkenberg and Ericsson. But yeah, Verstappen put in a great debut, but unluckily retired. Um, I think his Urs blew up. Not Urs, what am I saying? The power unit blew up after his pit stop, so he had to retire. Perez 10th, uh, poor performance from him. He was battling Button at the back, and McLaren's nowhere, and Perez caused a collision span, but eventually got past Button, so not a great performance there. Button, I've got to say, he put in a great defensive drive. Um, I think he did a great great job, even though the car and the whole package just isn't working, so it's, it's going to be a struggle for him in the next few races. Raikkonen would have finished fifth he was on an alternative strategy to all the other guys pitting twice instead of once and yeah would have been a solid fifth position obviously he was unlucky at the start with a uh, bit of contact with Vettel and Sainz but yeah could have been some solid points for him already talked about Verstappen Grosjean the Lotus has potential this season I can see them getting quite a few points but yeah it wasn't the greatest race overall there isn't too much to say about it so uh Hopefully Malaysia is a lot better because we all have to get up a l very early in the morning. So if you enjoyed this video, just a quick review, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to listen and look at some more of my videos. So catch you in the next review. Goodbye.